Well, look at my uh, manhole. We call it a manhole because it's not really big enough to be a man cave. Got myself an interesting lens here that uh, for Christmas, and uh, the CyberPower uh, uninterruptible supply here. This uh, turns out to be a little less than a, a lens. <laughs> it's a cup. Made to look like a lens. I don't have a camera. This would fit on anyway. This is a 55 millimeter and uh, uh, my uh, usual camera, the Canon uh, Vixia HG21 here. It really won't uh, handle this lens. <laughs> lens. It's bigger than uh, what's available there. Plus the fact it doesn't really handle interchangeable lenses. But anyway, it's an interesting gag gift, gift from my daughter. So. There you go. Uh, but uh, what I'm here today for is actually uh, this unit over here, which is my CyberPower uh, 1000 PF CLCD, which is the recommended supply uh, for un uh, uninterrupted power or for uh, use in the field on battery, because it has an internal battery inside here. Um, to power the uh, rival spectrum analyzer here and uh, other equipment that, uh, as you see, I have the rival, another rival for a signal generator or a waveform generator, and then the uh, O1 over here. So let's take a look at uh, what this actually does. I'm going to start out by uh, checking the uh, uninterruptible supply here. Telling me I got a full battery right here. Tells me I'm in AC power here and it's in the uh, ecological mode, I guess, is what that means. The load is uh, nothing because nothing's really turned on right now. I'm muted here, so I'm going to unmute that by holding this button in. And uh, we have zero events at the moment because uh, I've not lost power yet for. Uh, at any time. This is the uh, CyberPower uh, 1000 PF CL CD and it has battery built in and should last for about 90 minutes with just the uh, DSA 815 spectrum analyzer but uh, we're going to have more than that. We're going to have it turned on. I'll do that. Alright, and I'll turn on the uh, Rigel DG4102 uh, here. Get it going. All right, and we uh, will turn on the O1 uh, scope. Okay, it seems to be doing its thing. So we now have all three of these guys uh, running off this power supply. And over here, we can see what kind of current we're drawing. By going to here, we have an input of 120 volts, output of 120 volts, 60 hertz, 54 watts total amongst all these instruments, 60 volt amps, 9 watts uh, output on the uh, um, the outputs that are not on the uninterruptible supply, which I believe is mainly the uh, unit back here, which is a uh, weather receiver, but I'm not sure what else is on there. Six volt amps. And uh, the battery is at 99%, so it's uh, almost fully charged. And we should have 45 minutes uh, if we interrupt power right now. Back in the back, back here, I have the uh, power supply, so we'll turn that off. All right, now you see that the level is going down and I'm getting some beeps because uh, it's now on the, the battery, which you see right here, symbol. So it says, I'm on battery power. I don't have any input power. We'll confirm that by going over here. To, uh, and that's the first event. We have zero volts input. 
still have 120 output and 60 hertz and uh, we've got the uh, power still uh, being drawn here so there you go now if I want to stop that alarm I can push this for a while and it'll beep and then you'll see it's muted that's to uh, avoid an annoyance <laughs> and as you see all of these instruments are still working um, they're working just fine so that's how the thing works and uh, we'll come back in a while after this is a uh, drop down in voltage and uh, uh, battery uh, capacity and we'll see how it operates at the end of the uh, power cycle okay we've uh, gotten down to about uh, 10 to 18 percent somewhere in there and you can see it's on the end of the battery we're uh, down in this area here still on battery power of course I've got the alarm off just so I don't have to listen to it Pretty soon we'll uh, get a condition where uh, this battery symbol over here is going to start uh, flashing. I don't remember when that occurred before. I've done this before with just the uh, Regal Spectrum Analyzer. But as you see, we are approaching that uh, condition. I also uh, set up the analyzer to actually look at something here. In this case it's on an antenna that's going up over here. The antenna is uh, right uh, next to the uh, power supply unit. And I'm seeing down to about minus 100 uh, dBm on the uh, signals that are on here. Let's see if I can get in a little closer on that. Again, the strongest signal is that FM signal at around 105. And then there's several other signals here that uh, are, are shown as well. The Ragall uh, unit is uh, sleeping at, um, this is the waveform generator, is sleeping at the moment. But if I uh, wake it up, there you go. And I'm putting out a, uh, looks like a hundred, or one kilohertz uh, signal at five volts there. And uh, so it's doing a, a normal kind of load. And over here we have that one kilohertz uh, as displayed on the uh, O on uh, oscilloscope. So all three of these instruments are uh, actually functioning in a normal mode at this moment with uh, this thing down to about 10, 12 percent, something like that. I'm getting a little bit of a squeak out of the uh, the spectrum analyzer here. Uh, the signal levels apparently um, are adding up to more than the IF wants. So I can probably go over here and uh, knock the amplitude down. I've got 0 dB attenuation right now, so what I guess I'll do is uh, go back to auto, which will probably put it on 10 dB. Reduces our sensitivity somewhat, but uh, uh, should be okay. So now uh, that's not going to overload. And we just uh, have to wait a little bit here to see when this thing actually starts uh, flashing that battery symbol and tells me, you know, you really ought to think about turning something off. Okay, now we have the uh, flashing battery. 6%, uh, 8%, whatever. Um, one bar is showing in the battery uh, charge. However, it had dropped down below that. There it goes. It's disappeared again. So it's telling me it's time to shut these guys off. This one's still going strong. That one's still going strong. This one's still going strong. But it's probably time to restore power to this thing. So uh, I'm going to do that, but I'm hand holding this camera, so I'm going to have to uh, shut it off and then. Well, let's see if I can do it here. Let's uh, come in on this guy. I'll just reach back behind here and uh, turn on the power again. I can find the uh, switch that is.
Okay, I switched the switch back on. That's okay. And as you see, we restored this thing to what it needs to be. It was down to the two minute uh, position here. The battery is still showing that it's uh, discharged. And uh, I'll unmute this thing. And when I unmuted it, uh, we still have uh, one to two minutes, it says here. And I believe that I'm supposed to cycle this by hitting that. And uh, so we should see the uh, charge start coming back on this thing in a, in a minute here. Upon reviewing uh, what the instructions had to say, I think the best plan is if you get down that low is to uh, turn off the equipment, turn off the uninterruptible power supply, uh, press this button till it uh, shuts down, which shuts off all the power, including to the instruments, then hold it in and it'll turn back on. And as you see, we now have some charge going back into the battery. We have a little higher voltage. And uh, so apparently uh, this does not uh, reset itself per se. But anyway, it's probably the best plan to do anyway is to shut off the equipment. Turn uh, this off using this button. And uh, then turn it back on using the button. Then turn the equipment back on. So that's, uh, that's it in a nutshell.